Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in about 30 seconds. I just want to give you a little bit of context. The video you're about to watch is part of a series of educational videos. Some of them are taught by me. Some of them are taught by other instructors. The goal here is to bring in experts who have excelled in their niche or their industry over their career and let them teach over to you whatever they specialize in. There's a variety of tools, technologies, walkthroughs, sales, marketing, business, startup, growth concepts and ideas. Hopefully you can learn and the whole goal of all of these videos is to help you level up in your personal or your professional life. Enjoy. Welcome to the complete Wirecast Pro course. Here with me, Jerry Banfield. I use Wirecast Pro for live streaming on Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitch, and Beam all at the same time while recording. This is a software I use to make all of my new courses with. You can get Wirecast at jerrybanfield.com slash resources and you can see I can put that up there. You can get it right there and just go to the link to try Wirecast. And if you really want to use Wirecast, I'll be grateful if you use my affiliate link. I get 15% of the sale and Wirecast is almost $500 or it's almost $1,000 for the version I use. So I use Wirecast because it has an incredibly powerful set of features that allow me to do almost anything, including right now what looks like screen capture tutorial recording, even though I'm just using a second monitor. So I'll show you how I get these different shots set up. I'll show you inside my equipment set up for this. I'll show you everything here in this class to help you use Wirecast how I do. And if you're considering whether you want to get Wirecast or try another broadcasting and recording software, I hope this course will be helpful for you to decide that. So thank you very much for watching this and I hope you enjoy the class. Thank you very much for getting started with this course. I'm so excited you're here today. I'm grateful for all the suggestions I've had to make a course like this. So I'm excited to show you inside Wirecast. So how do you know which version of Wirecast you need? If you've already got a paid version of Wirecast, then you can just skip ahead, or this might help you decide if you want to upgrade. So I'm on jerrybanfield.com slash resources. On here you can see where my link is for, so I have Wirecast 7 Pro for Mac, and then I have the link to go over here and try Wirecast over here. And then these are the options for getting Wirecast. So you click on pricing here and there's two basic versions of Wirecast. You've got Wirecast Studio and you've got Wirecast Pro. So I'm using Wirecast Pro as you will see in the upper left hand corner on all the videos where I'm actually showing inside Wirecast. So what different features are there and what things are important. So for me, one of the key things I really like is this on the pro version, you've got added input sources. Now this can allow you to do some amazing things. For example, you can input web streams. So for having a donation widget or anything like that on your gaming live streams, this is really nice. If you're collaborating with someone else, for example, you want to do some kind of a call with them online, you could import their stream directly into your stream and put it out there. This allows for some awesome features you can do in terms of customizing. Now I also like over here you've got these added level production tools you can easily do replays there's advanced audio controls and new audio effects so I'm thinking that most of the time you will be just fine with the Wirecast Studio version. So I bought the pro version, I'm a try hard, I wanted to have every single feature available, I wanted to be able to teach every single feature on it. So I'm thinking that Wirecast Studio might be the best version for you more than likely, unless you really care about getting in a couple of extra features. This one is called higher resolution ISO recording and replay. This is a nice feature, especially if you're doing something where you might want the raw feed of your face or whatever the webcam you're on or whatever the screen you're capturing. If you want that actual feed, then you can capture that separately. So I have the ability to do this now. For example, I could record just the screen or just my webcam 
in addition to recording the combined picture. So then if let's say I wanted to, and maybe I'll do this in the future with my courses, I'll just do the screen capture part of it so that anyone else could, any of my partners could easily narrate over it and use the screen capture to do their own narration. So this gives me some really nice options, but I'm guessing most of the time you're not going to need more than the Wirecast Studio. Now, is it worth it to pay $495 for this? If you want to live stream on your Mac, I would say it definitely is because this has Mac software. A lot of the other streaming options require Windows. If you want to use your Mac, I think this is an outstanding way to do a live stream. So that's why I got Wirecast because it's the best option today for live streaming, I think, on Mac. And I love the recording features in Wirecast. I record all of my new courses today in Wirecast because why bother with Camtasia when Wirecast is so powerful? So I think, especially if your internet's up for it, if you've got a computer with a fast enough processor to be able to live stream on one or two or three websites at once, I have a Mac Pro I'm renting with 12 cores that allows me to live stream on four or five websites at once and record it. The more you stream, the more it takes up your processor. So I th am getting a ton of benefit out of having Wirecast. You might, if you haven't invested in something like Camtasia already, or maybe if you have, I think Wirecast Studio can be a fantastic thing. One last big benefit. If you've made it all the way to the end, I hope this is really worth it. Now in Camtasia or in most of the other software I've used to record, you have to render the video afterwards. Now guess what? I don't have to render this when it's done. As soon as I hit record over here, it's over. I literally can upload the video straight after that as long as I'm willing to just let my dogs bark in the background like they did. As long as you have patience with me to deal with an extra little click at the beginning and click at the end as I start the camera. Wirecast is amazing with this feature. So I literally can, I think I can drag it. Oh, I can't drag it over mid screen recording right here. But I can literally hit the record button and end it and my MP4 file is ready to go immediately. That to me is the most incredible part about Wirecast. It saves me a ton of time. I can record a two hour course in two hours and 30 minutes today, just doing pre-recorded videos. So I think that makes Wirecast worth it, absolutely. So if you'd like to buy Wirecast, would you please use the link on my website so that they know I told you about Wirecast and then I get a commission when you actually go through and use my link. You'll get the same price whether you buy it straight from me or from them. So thank you very much for watching this. I appreciate you getting started with this class and now I'm literally when I go click done, I click the off the record button, my video file is ready to go. What is the one thing? that absolutely makes Wirecast worth the money. If you skipped ahead of this last lecture before this, you'll be glad I mentioned this again, and I'll show you this again just so it really sinks in because this is amazing. So you see this file right here. I'll zoom out so you can't hardly miss it. Now at the top here, there's a file called My Stream Zero that is being created right now while I record this. So if you use another program, you often will have to render or edit or do all kinds of messy things that add a whole bunch of time. Now in Wirecast, and I'm sure there's other programs that can do this, but this is something that I've only seen personally in Wirecast and it's so good. As soon as I hit the record button, so you see this green record button, this means I'm recording over here right now, and as soon as I hit this green record button, I have a file ready to go here. That means I don't have to render it and I don't even fool around with editing it anymore because it takes so much extra time. Is it worth my time? Is it worth it to take? Would you rather me produce half as many courses 
to literally take the time to cut one second from the beginning and one second from the end and an occasional mistake in the middle or the dogs barking in. Would you rather me be able to do half as many courses, if not less, or would you be willing to tolerate a little extra error in exchange for twice, if not five times as many courses? This is the reason I do everything now with Wirecast. I don't use any other programs to screen capture or live stream because all I have to do, as soon as I hit that record, my file is ready. I literally blast through recording things. I just pretty much talk straight through, break things up a little bit with the record button, and then... I upload. It is just unbelievably fast. If you see that I've put up a 50 minute course, it probably only took me an hour or so to film that course and another 15 minutes to get it uploaded, get the thumbnail, put the text in there. This is so incredibly fast. It's literally five or 10 times faster than what I did originally recording videos using, oh man, some nasty native capture software for my webcam, putting that in Windows Movie Maker, rendering it out of my slow Windows computer. The setup I have now on my Mac Pro is at least 10 times faster than what I started with. It used to take me, and it takes other people 40 plus hours often to make a five or 10 hour course. Hey, why work harder? I just try and work smarter and Wirecast helps me to work smarter. So thank you very much for watching this. I'm really pumped. As soon as I click this little green button, the whole file's done. Thank you for continuing with this Wirecast course. What's the number one feature to pay attention to when using Wirecast? The most key thing in Wirecast is getting all these shots set up correctly down here. If you make all these shots down here, this is how I produce my whole stream. So for example, this first level shot. So these shots are from top to bottom. So the top thing on my Wirecast list here is where my face goes. So let me show you these shots. I had it right. Look, it's over on the left now. I can move it. I click this shot and I put it upper right. This shot goes over here to upper left. This is a slightly different version of left. This is the, oh my God, your face is right in the middle shot. This is a full right shot. And then I've got a full left shot over here. So I've got all of these things set up based on connecting my equipment and everything. So I will show you how to get that set up too. But before you even do any of your equipment or anything, you want to make sure you can get your shots at least thought out or planned out. So for example, you can plan, okay, I wanna put my face on top and you can use the chroma key in Wirecast. I'm using a chroma key. There's actually a green screen behind me here. So you can use the chroma key in a shot if you want to. And the shots then are where you add your sources in also. So if I wanted to put in a new shot over here, you see this is how I add in a device over here. Now I have got some bad news for you. If you don't see your capture device over here, like if you don't see your webcam over here or something, that means Wirecast doesn't recognize it. So if I wanted to put in a new shot right there, then I just need to go in here and select whatever shot I want to put in and then on this menu on the side, I can edit it. So over here, I've got all my options. So this allows me to position it exactly where I want to. This allows me to put it in at the scale I want to over here. I have options. I've cropped this one. So remember that 266. So if I don't crop it, you'll see the, the screen go, can go out way farther over here if I don't crop it, but then I do want to crop it, so I put it back in at 266 over here. And now you have these changes you can put. I have my changes apply live, but you can also set up a preview window on the left side here and preview your changes. But I think for simplicity, it's best to just have it all as simple as possible. So I've got my live view right here, and whenever I change something, it automatically goes live. So the basic functions in Wirecast starts with adding these shots in. So the 
when you use Wirecast, one of the biggest things that I was frustrated with getting started was trying to figure out how to get all my sources in. So there's a few different ways to do that. We'll cover that in a minute. I'll finish showing you about how these shots work. So on the shots here, what you can do is I'll move to the upper right here so you can see these more clearly. You, on these shots you've got available here, and I can actually move them up so you can see that a little bit better here. So on these shots, you've got, you have your layers. So I've got my face on top, then I've got scoreboards down here, or technically these are media files. So I add these in and I put a media file in. So these are literally JPEGs. So I put this JPEG in, for example, I can put that. Yes, I realize <clears throat> it goes over my face now. So look, this is why I love Wirecast. If I can just move my face around all the time during the live presentation, it's so ridiculously easy. Look, if I decide you need the big version of this here, look, now you've got the big version. You can switch all these things up in real time. It's so sweet. So I've got all these scoreboards over here. As you can see, I can just effortlessly switch this up based on whatever it is I want to show. And I started putting these up there to cover URLs in real time. So it's really nice, you can easily just put one of these on top. What I was doing before was using Final Cut Pro X to put one of these on top and then you had to render it. So with Wirecast, you can put these directly in the original recording. And then if you've got the Pro version of Wirecast, there's this little ISO record button up here in the top. So it's right up here next to the record button. You hit ISO record and you can record the source without recording any of the scoreboards. So I could just record my screen without my face, without any of the scoreboards on it. And then I would have that available. So you also, I've got this really cool thing here. So this last option, this donate option is a, web stream. So this actually allows people to donate for me in real time and it then displays on the stream. So regardless of where someone is watching, for example, if someone donates, it'll pop up on every live stream at once. So this is right next to my head over here. I've got a web stream I've added in that allows me to take donations in real time. So there's so many amazing things like this you can do with Wirecast. And then the way I've got, I have mine set up and I think you might like to set it up the exact same way. So I start, I've got all my face shots on top over left, right, mid, small, large. I've got them all over here. I can move them around in real time effortlessly. And then I've got down here on the, and it's nice because I can actually see so I've got multiple monitors, so I can see, I can just glance off to the right and see what my shot looks like. So I can see here that my head is in the position I want it to be in, which is great. So then I've got all my head shots up on top and I've got the chroma key, I'll show you more about that in a minute. Then I've got all my headers. So these are things I don't want to cover my face up. So the cool thing is you see if I move this over and put my face on the upper right, my face actually covers this up because my face has first priority. So if I put my face over here, my face is the top layer, and then what I get is progressively down layers from there. So I've got these scoreboards, but then next down below that, I've got my different capture options. So this, what I've done on this level is I've added a, what does it call it in here? I've added a screen capture. So I've got two monitors up on my Mac and I just set this up this morning. I'm so pumped with it. So I'm actually, I've got this monitor I've connected my Mac to and then I'm screen capturing it and then all I have to do is switch displays on this monitor and go over to this other input right here and then if I go over to this input over here, there's no feed right now but if I go over to that input, then I can capture whatever I'm doing on my Windows computer. So I can literally just switch between my Windows computer and my Mac effortlessly while I'm live streaming here. This is an incredible setup I've got. I'll show you more about the equipment. I figure you want to know more inside the program first. 
And then if you have an emergency or something, or if you want to say, hey, the live stream is going to start in a little while, you can just switch it over like that. So I found that helpful to have one of these up. Then for example, if you realize, uh oh, I just clicked something that's going to bring private information up, or if you need to go AFK, or if you need to do something on the background, you can just click over and put something up instead of your display. Just an amazing amount of options on this. And then the bottom two, I've got my microphones in separately here. So I've got this one mic right here, but I can add more microphones if I want. So what happens then, and I'm going to turn this off so this is intentional. So then I, you see I turn it off so I've still got another shot in here that has some audio as you can see bouncing around on here. So then I just found I've actually got the microphone connected on this one as well. So then I've got the mic included in both of these. So then what I can do, I can turn the audio off here. And now you see there, there's still, <laughs> I don't know how to use everything just perfectly yet. You're going to make it live. There, now I turned it off correctly. If you are live, you have to hit the live button sometimes. So you can see I have the audio on different sources. So I can turn the audio off. I could switch the audio. For example, if I was doing a podcast or I had someone else in here, I could, or like I've done on my live stream, if I go away from the keyboard, I click the audio off and then. So there, I've got the audio back on. And then I've also got the option down here to turn the system audio off. So I've got the system audio that I can capture down here too, and then I can turn that off. So this is why I love Wirecast. You can see the depth of this. There's just so many different things you can do with it. The setup is so deep and complete and effective. It works consistently good, and it uses a small percent. Now, I've got a... I've got a 12 core CPU here, but it's only using like 7% of my CPU right now just to record this. So it's relatively, it doesn't hit that hard at least on the CPU. I've got, if your computer can't keep up with it, then you may need to get a better computer to use Wirecast as I did. So thank you very much for watching this. I love Wirecast so much. I appreciate the time you're spending in this Wirecast course. I hope this is helpful in showing you the features of Wirecast. Aren't we having so much fun in this Wirecast course? I'm having a lot of fun teaching it right now and the reality is I'm just talking to a room with just me and a bunch of computers in it. So I'm having a great time here. I hope you are as well. What I'm going to do in this episode of this course is show you exactly how to add in a source. Now this is the same basic thing regardless of the source you add in. So this is how you fill out all these panels down here so that you can get them looking like I have. Now what I've done first is I've added, I've separated the audio. As you can see in that last recording, I had the audio on two different things, which if you want to mute your audio is really annoying. And look, I bet I still have the same thing on this one. So I turn the audio off on that one and I hit live. And that way, if I go mute it, then there's no more sound. So what I want to do is have the same property with the system audio. So on this one, I set this up from the beginning with no system audio. So what I want to do now, I have a system audio one I've set up here. So I'll show you exactly how to add this source in. First, I'll show you what it does. I'll click off the screen and play another video. That's you might be able to apply this to your partner there. Now you hear, you heard the other video playing in the background. Now watch if I will click the blank shot and now you won't hear it. There, so I just clicked it, you didn't hear anything there. So what I'm going to do is add this back. So I'm going to delete this shot in here and then what I'm going to do is show you how to add it back. So to add something, you click one of these plus buttons over here 
So I'm adding in the very bottom component is the system audio. So you can only, one thing you might have noticed, there's these red lights, you can only have one thing on at a time. So if I want the system audio and my microphone to be active at the same time, then I wanna make sure I only have one thing in. I do this because, there's lots of times I'm doing so many things it's easy for overlap. So for example, if I've got my Windows machine on and there's some video playing in the background, if I just had all these set up sloppy with all the audio all over the place, then I'd have a hard time figuring out how to stop the audio playing. This system I've got allows me to isolate and have exactly what I want on with nothing else. So what I do, I go over here. Now what I actually want to do to add system audio is to add a screen capture. So for a lot of the things you're going to want to do in Wirecast, this is the exact same thing you're going to want to do. Now you can go over and use a screen capture. Uh, I, I already made one here that's got it done, but what I'll do is show you new here on how to do this. So what, what you, what I did to set up this initial screen capture, I'll show you how to set that up first and then I'll show you the system audio that I want to do. So the first thing you want to do, if you're using Wirecast and you're trying to just use it to do screen capture, do live streaming, you got one computer, your two monitors, you want to just record courses, all you need to do thankfully to do this is do a screen capture. You don't need a capture card, all you need is a mic and you can even do this with one monitor. So then what you do, you just go select window monitor. Now you pick between the monitors you have. So I have a two monitor set up here. So I pick the BenQ one and then I can select a region, but normally you want to be able to go full screen because that's easy. However, if your full screen is bigger than 1920 by 1080, you might just want to do a select screen region. But what I'm doing here, I hit full screen, then I hit OK. So now you can see exactly what it's going to capture, which is already what is being captured. And then you can pick different options here. I like the option to just capture the monitor because that's simple. However, you can capture the window specifically or the game. Depending on what you're trying to do, you can just play around with these different things and see what works best for you. And then I definitely want to show cursor on this to show you what I'm doing with a cursor, but you actually can turn the cursor off if you don't want to show that. And then in here you can do system audio. Now I'm doing the system audio and the video separate, but if you want to, you can do them together. I recommend doing them separate in case you want to, if you know from the beginning you don't want to include the system audio in it, then you don't wanna to have to bother and mess around with that. So I recommend just doing the video and then what you can do is actually uncheck video and you can just set up another one like I'm doing to capture this system audio. And then the nice thing is Wirecast, I think, is only capturing the system audio that's playing. It's not capturing my voice. So that's a really nice thing. So that's how you set it up and then you add OK and then a new shot comes out there. So I actually, I think if I go up here on Wirecast, I think I can just put in, so if you've already put one in, so if you then if you've already put one in, you can use your existing one. So you'll see I just load Mac System Audio here. I put that in and now I go live and now that's up there. So I've I, if you make one, and you delete it, you can just add it back in real easy. Now check this out, let's see if it works. This to a bunch of different situations. There we go, perfect. So I played a video in the background on another monitor and it works. So that's how you add a screen capture shot in and that's the most basic type of shot to add in. So I've got my screen capture shot up here and then I can actually move that over if I want to when, whenever I'm not recording. So then I've got, you can move these around so that I like to have the ones I use the most over here on the left and then put things I use less over on the right. 
So you've got these, I just set up this new screen capture shot today. I've been just capturing from my Windows computer. I'm so pumped I just figured out how to do this in Wirecast today, which is why I'm immediately making this course for you. So I've got all these things set up here. So basically you can just build out your Wirecast in the very simplest format with these five basic things. So you get your face up here, you get your scoreboards or your overlays up here, you get your screenshots in here, you get your mic down here, and you get your system audio in here. And the nice thing is if you have multiple microphones, you can just pick them all out in capture devices and add those multiple microphones in. So if I wanted to, for example, put the audio in from one of these webcams, then it would simply pop up here and give me the opportunity to put some of these in. So you can see it just drops the audio in right here and then it actually switched over to that. So that audio is not as good. So then I go back over here and it switches back to the audio I had. So you can see how easy it is to add things up, change things around and if you don't like something, you can just delete that shot and get rid of it. So this is why I love Wirecast. It's so effective, it's so powerful, it's so consistent. It does occasionally crash and ruin everything, but usually that's only when I'm live streaming. So I've showed you first what are, I think are some of the very basics and I hope these are helpful for you in getting your Wirecast set up. One of the most common requests I get is, Jerry, how do you do that green screen? Well, first, you just need a green curtain which you can order on Amazon and guess what? I literally have the exact curtain I'm using linked on my resources page. So you can go find the exact curtain if you wanna use the same one I am or you can just order a green screen curtain. You don't need to fool around with anything else. I'll make the big here so you can see it works really well. It And so there's basic things. You need a green screen curtain, that's one. You need your webcam to be lined up so the curtain's in the background. And then you need some lighting. For lighting, get your lighting set up so you're not all like dark eyes and shadowies and all these crazy things. Get, get your lighting set up good. And look, you don't need expensive lights. You can get cheap Walmart lights. If cheap clip-on lights, that's all I've gotten here. I've got these really cheap lights. They're like five, 10, 15 bucks each and I've got a bunch of them. The nice thing is I can then point them and move them around down here. So look, if I decide I want to light in a different spot, look, I'll just take this, pick this up. Look, here's one of my lights right here. I can decide, okay, well, I want it I want it over here. Like I want it right up like on my face. Oh, well, no, all right. So the nice thing is you can move all these lights around and I just clip this back down here and move it around a bit. And there I've got, I have a little bit of lighting down bottom now. And that's the nice thing. You just have these clip on lights then. So you need your lighting and the nice thing, the clip on lights are flexible. You can move the clip on lights around anywhere you want to. And then the way to minimize shadows is to have lighting from every angle. So if you just have one light, then you often will get light in from a different angle that'll mess everything up. Also, if you have natural lighting, that will mess things up to no end. Because if the sun's up or if the sun's halfway or going down or setting or not up, the lighting will be all different. So I have a complete dark room here. If I turn the lights off, there's no natural light that comes in here, almost no natural light that comes in here. So I film in complete darkness and that allows my lighting to completely go exactly how I set it up. So in order to get your green screen to work right, you need to have a green curtain and I've got mine hung up. I've got it hung up with like a steel rod over there. And then, <laughs> I've got my lighting hung up with a steel rod over there up on the top of this. So right up here, there's just a rod that hangs a curtain up. So this is beautiful because I literally have this in my bedroom. So my bed is literally exactly right behind me. I just was sleeping in there an hour or two ago. So I just have a steel, it's a, a flexible, so it's not hard. And it's kind of hung up on two different hooks. So I hang the green screen behind me and then the key you wanna have it smooth 
So you want to have it pulled tight so there's not a bunch of wrinkles. And the better your lighting is, the better you'll get a clear chroma key. So I've spent three minutes talking about the setup here and allowing my dogs to bark in the background because I want to make sure that you understand first setting your green screen up correctly is the key to getting it done right. And then once you've got your green screen set up correctly, then you can put in a capture device over here and then which is likely to just be a webcam of some type. So I use the HD Pro Webcam C920 is what I use. And then I'll bring this shot layer down here so there's a little more up here you can see. So uh, over here then, once you go, you click on, once you've got your source editor, it'll pop up over here. Then you've got your chroma key over here. So all you have to do is hit chroma key on this. So if I turn off chroma key and I make that live, whoa, oh, there's a big green screen in the middle. Oh no. So then I hit chroma key back. Bam. Look at that. How should you like that, huh? That's great, isn't it? So this is why I love the chroma key. The chroma key and Wirecast works really well. The chroma key and Wirecast is one of the best I've seen. And the only thing is if you wear a green or green-ish shirt, it will mess it up. Now, why green? Green is used because there's no natural green in human pigment. So if you, you can chroma key in anything, but if you chroma key in red, for example, it'll wash your lips out too. If you chroma key in, depending on the color of your eyes, you might wash your color of your eyes out. So you you use green because you, your skin then naturally doesn't get washed out of the chroma key. So you just hit the chroma key up here and then that's it. It's really that simple. That's why Wirecast is so awesome. I'll show you that again. Look how easy this is. There, I got this huge green screen right here. That's the raw product, so to speak. You click use chroma key, bam, it's gone. Now, if it doesn't look like that on yours, I would guess you need to mess with the lighting first. Try messing around with the lighting first rather than, and try, you see my green screen, if I click off this, you see my green screen is pretty flat. So what makes a green screen stink is when there's big shadows on it. it it gets off green. So the chroma key is going and looking for green and then it's taking that out of the shot. So your chroma key, if you get your green so dark with a shadow that it turns into black, then the chroma key won't work correctly. If you don't have enough lighting in your room, the chroma key won't work correctly. So here, let me show you what that looks like. Let's, we'll turn this off. And so if your room's not lit well enough and you hit chroma key on this then, look, you'll get something nasty like that. So if you don't have the right lighting, your chroma key won't work correctly. So if you do get the right lighting, your chroma key will wash everything out relatively quickly there. So I'm really excited. You've got in, you've seen how to use the chroma key now, and I hope you're excited about Wirecast as excited as I am. Thank you very much for continuing your journey learning with me. In this lecture, I will show you exactly how to make one of these banners. So I love these banners like this. These banners make it really easy to cover up the URL for privacy on a recording to promote whatever you want to share. And I think these are, banners are very helpful. So here's how you do one. You hit the on the second level is probably where you want to put the banners and then I might need to move my face here for a minute and then you go down here you hit you go down and use a media file right here so you get a media file all you need is a JPEG it needs to be 1080 pixels wide and as high as you want the banner to go so you go grab the media file right here you put the media file in that you want to use and then when you've got the media file in that you want to use, then you go, all you need to do is edit the position of it. So for example, I've got this, you know, I'll select this Skillshare one. You can see in the upper left here, actually if I have the media file, you can't see in the upper left. So that's an interesting teaching point. So in the upper left, 
you put the position on X where it goes across, so you wanna leave it at zero if you've made it at 1080, and then you want to put the Y wherever you want it. So you could have it on the bottom of the screen, or you could have it on the top of the screen. So wherever you put the coordinates over here, then we'll adjust wherever it is. You can also use these to crop it if you've made it or change the color as needed. So you put these, when you get a shot in here, you'll see it fills out, but then I can't show it to you. <laughs> so you see the shot properties in the position over here allow you to adjust wherever the media file is. So I think having one of these banners is one of the most helpful things because it allows me to promote URLs in my videos. And then if someone takes my video and does something else with it, that's fine because I've got not only my face, but my URL on it too. So that is a really helpful thing. So I love these little banners up here. Each of these banners allow me to promote so many different things in one video. And this way when I'm recording a class, I can just naturally keep talking and cycle through one banner or another. And then it's nice if I have a specific page to promote, like I collaborated with Joe Perry's, then Joe Paris, I just have a banner specifically for that. So I appreciate you watching this. I hope this is helpful to learn how these banners are created and used in Wirecast. Thank you very much for getting all the way here with me. Would you help me figure out what else you want to teach? I've already shared the basics of what I do in Wirecast with you and I have not went into setting the live streaming up because to me you go put that in. However, and it's unique based on exactly where you're streaming and exactly what your feed is. So would you help me understand what else you want me to teach in this class? I've had the videos before this ready for several days now and I'm just putting this class up there and trusting you to tell me what else you want. What else do you want me to teach? So just post in the discussions, tell me what else you want me to teach. When I see your discussions in there, I will then go put more into this class. Now, I appreciate you getting all the way through it. Would you like to be the first person to do the class project and in return, I'll send you $20 online with Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash. If you don't know what those are, I have a class, just search for my Dash class and you'll find exactly how to set up a free Dash wallet and get Dash sent to you. And if you, you can also look up and get a free Bitcoin wallet. There's a link to an insured Bitcoin wallet on Coinbase on my jerrybanfield.com slash resources page you can use also. So you need that address in order to participate in the giveaway. But once you've got that address, would you just post what you've learned and done as a result of this class? Post that as the class project along with your Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash address, and I will send you $20 in whatever Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash is worth today. Please tell me which one you want me to send it to as well, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, etc. Post your address in there. And look in my giveaways class if you want to see exactly how that's done. So I've put these, I'm putting these little Easter eggs in every single Skillshare class. And the first person, so if someone's already done this and already won the giveaway on Skillshare, then just go try one of my other courses. I'm making new courses every day. I'm doing little giveaways like this all the time. I try and put some Easter eggs in there, so to speak, so you can have some fun. And so it's, you know, little surprises for you. So I appreciate you watching this. Would you help me help you either by sharing on the class project and or telling me what else you'd like to learn here in this class? Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day today.